I'm thinking about maybe having my tits done. I don't mean I want them any bigger. They're a nice size, actually. I just thought maybe I'd have them fluffed up a bit. I don't know. Maybe I'll just grow my hair. <laughs> what time is it? I don't want to spend any more time talking about Patrick. It's my nickel, right? I think I'm wearing a lot of red lately. Patrick hated me in red. So for 10 years, I never wore it. Now, everything I buy is in red. You know what? I don't even like red. <laughs> Why do I let him do this to me? I thought I was doing better. I think I'm doing better, don't you? Well, I think I'm doing better. I mean, I know I started smoking again, but it's because I was eating so much. This girl that he claims to be in love with is petite. Probably has firm breasts, too. But hell, who doesn't at that age? Bastard. You know, it's been almost a year since he asked for the divorce. Why do I still have a pit in my stomach every morning? Why haven't I unpacked my moving boxes in four months? Why do I still park my car five blocks from work? Why do you park your car five blocks from work? It's a Mercedes. You think the guys I work with now can afford a Mercedes? You think it's right to defend indigent clients all day long and then bomb on home in an $80,000 car? I think it's wrong. Do you ever talk? What the hell am I paying you for anyway? Sorry. Really, I'm sorry. I know these things take time. Does my neck look crepey to you? Do you like your new job? What? Do you enjoy your work? Yeah. A client spit in my hand. I offered my hand to her, you know, assuming she was going to shake it. She spits in it. But I'm happy. I wonder when it was he decided he didn't love me anymore. <laughs> Living in time and feeling every moment. Do I walk into tomorrow? Seven, the People versus Louise Walker. Where's counsel for the defendant? Mr. Weisberg? The People versus Louise Walker? Is Mr. Calling Mr. Weisberg? Do you understand all that? Mr. Weisberg? Mr. Weisberg? Mr. Weisberg? Ms. O'Neill, replacing Mr. Weisberg, Your Honor. Nice of you to join us. Who the hell are you? I'm your new attorney. Your Honor, the defense requests a continuance. No! I can't go back in that place. I will not go back in that place. You instruct your client to remain silent, Counselor. Yes, Your Honor, please, let me do the talking. Your Honor, I apologize for Mr. Weisberg's failure to request appropriate documents. Your Honor, the Public Defender's Office has had ample time to file motions. I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I was reassigned to this case only this morning. That's irrelevant. I haven't even seen the file. I'll save you the trouble. She threw her newborn infant into a dumpster. That is not true. 
The other guy told you I was not guilty. I did not kill my baby. Ms. Yamamoto, I don't relish the idea of inviting a reversal down the road, do you? Good. Continuance granted. Thank you, Your Honor. Next case. What is this, a joke? Morning, Carol. Boss wants to see you. Good. Now, you tell me what it is you want me I to want do. I want a little consideration, right, Ben. What? What? I've been here three years almost. Not interrupting, am I? No, sit down. How about an explanation? Yes, Rosie, later. Would you sit down? Later. I get a phone call at 8.05 in my home, which is in Santa Monica, instructing me to be in court on a case I've never even heard of by 9.30. Do you know how long it takes to get from Santa Monica down here? No, but I'm sure you'll tell me about it later. Sit down. You guys met yet? Not officially. Rosie O'Neill. Hank Mitchell. Pleasure. He'll get over it. Over what? We've had a little cutback, Rosie. Your office mate, Weisberg. Craig. Yeah, Craig. Craig. Craig succumbed. Succumbed? To the pressure. And that's how I got stuck with his case at an hour's notice? They nailed him on a DUI at 7 this morning. Who knew? What a shame. Anyway, Rosie, I figured you could handle it. So you handled it, didn't you? Of course I handled it. Exactly. Two months on a job. Already you're a maven. So. Here are some more going away presents from Weisberg. And the Rosie, don't worry about Hank. He'll get used to the idea in no time at all. Mazel tov. What idea? Oh, yeah. Well, I figured since Weisberg is gone, I could use your office for some juniors. And Hank has all that extra room, so. So I'm his new best friend. Hmm. It's only temporary. Hey, you're going to love him. You get this wall. I've had my own office since 1987. Hey, this wasn't my idea. You know, it took me seven years to get to level four. He handed it to you on a silver platter. Hand it to me? I've been practicing law for 16 years. Beverly Hill. What's the difference? About $500 an outfit. Well, get off it, Look, baby. I grew up here. I know the people. I know how they live and how they die. You can't learn that. And you can't come slumming down here and expect to just, just fit in. Uh, excuse me. What about the 65 other lawyers running around out there? How'd they all grow up in the streets, too? 90% of them will burn out and head for Century City. So what are you, Hank? The only one who really knows be pretty lonely up there. You don't belong here, lady. I'm a lawyer. I've done everything from multi-million dollar corporate litigation to whiplash. And I've done my share of criminal pro bono work for no other reason than it needed to be done. So you could take that defensive chip off your pompous shoulder and shove it up your inflated ego. And I'll take this wall. What? Which one of you is Rosie O'Neill? Take a wild guess. Very sharp. I like that. And you are? Weisberg's 1130 engagement. Traffic's going backwards out there. Anywho, they told me he's out, you're in. Right. Uh, come on in. Have a seat. Right here. Uh, OK. Um. You're Joseph Gagliardi? Jojo. Gags, if you prefer, I do. Oh, how do you do? Uh, Mr. Uh, Gagliardi... Please. I... Jojo. Gags. To be honest with you, Gags, 
Uh, I just inherited this case, and um, I really need some time to study it. I, I'm very sorry. Could we reschedule this tomorrow sometime? You pick. I, I got flexible hours. Great, great. Uh, what do you do? I'm self-employed. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm in discount clothing. Ah, nice-looking jacket, by the by. Amani? From a former life. Very classy. Let's talk accessories sometime. I could arrange your deals, so make your eyes water. I I'm sure you could. Uh, so how's 11 o'clock? Terrific. Uh, to discuss the case. You're on. Great. Fiona? Mother, what are you doing here? Well, we had a day for lunch. Shop for your sister's baby shower. I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm just buried here, Mother. I, I, I can't. It's all right. I, I don't mean to interrupt. No problem. I'm out of here. You got a head? I beg your pardon? I, I got to water my horse. A toilet. Oh, yeah, two doors down. Between you, me, and Mom, Weisberg was a chooch. You, I could tell, are a winner and a half. You ever need a watch, the kid knows where to find me. A client. Yeah, David, the uh, grand jury just came down with an indictment on you. Well, what, was it crack or what? Uh, yeah, who wants to start with a C? Get that one. These are the kinds of people that you represent. That's right, Mother. This isn't law, it's street cleaning. You graduated fifth in your class from law school, so you could work for the sanitation department. And you left one of the most successful practices in Beverly Hills. It left me, remember? Patrick left you. Half of that firm could have been yours if you'd wanted it. Well, I didn't want it. I didn't want to represent any more clients whose only goal in life was to get richer than they already are. I wasn't their lawyer, I was their investment banker, and I hated it. These clients need me. I need them. 43 years old, Mother, and all I've got to show for it is 43 credit cards and a freaking Mercedes. I told you to have children. There were at least 50 other firms just dying to have you. Could have had your choice. I did. This is my choice. Your father is turning over in his grave. Oh, what do you know about it, Mother? I worked side by side with him for six years. He'd have done this in a minute, but he had to keep you in Hancock Park and Dory and me in private school. Oh, that's right. He put his family first, ahead of old. Charity begins at home, Fiona. This isn't charity. The constitutional right. Everybody's burying their heads in the sand, saying it's somebody else's job. Well, it's my job now, and my choice, and I like it. Will you at least be coming for your sister's shower on Sunday, or are you going to be too busy for her, too? I'll be there. Bye. Oh, by the way, you and Dory asked to go to private school with all your friends. You remember that? Yeah. If you really don't have time for lunch, I, I could have something sent in. It's all right, I'll eat. I promise.
morning. Not for me. Well, maybe we can change that. Oh, yeah, how? Well, that's what we're going to figure out. It's my job to help you. Right. Yours and everybody else's. Doctors, clinics, cops, Weisberg. They all wanted to help me. Look where I am. I know. I'm very I don't sorry. don't want any more help. I just want to be left alone, OK? Just leave me alone. I don't usually eat this stuff. What? I wanted a salad, but the line was too long. Yeah, well, I do usually eat this stuff. Rich, give me a foot long with chili, onions, kraut, relish, mayo, and mustard. If you got a couple hot peppers, throw that in there, too, will you? I'll have the same. Just to keep it simple. back to the office, too, do you mind? Or you want me to cross the street? Free country. What the hell's your name, anyway? Excuse me? I mean, I mean your mother calls you Fiona. You call yourself Rosie? Were you undercover or something? My name is Fiona Rose O'Neill. My father nicknamed me Rosie. It's stuck. Anything else you want to know? Not really. Good. I'd like to ask you a question, a legal one. How do you know when death occurs? You don't have to come here no more. I'm serious. How can you tell if a person stopped breathing before his body's disposed of? You know, the dumpster thing? Yeah. I had a client once, kidnapped a kid, beat the hell out of him, and then torched him. The DA made a big deal out of the fact that the kid was still alive when he was set on fire. How could they tell? The body was dumped behind the truck stop and then immolated. And the fumes were obviously... Carbon monoxide. They found enough in his blood to prove that he breathed at the truck stop. Right, right. A baby breathes through the umbilical cord. For this, I missed the elevator. Do you think there's enough carbon monoxide just in the air to show up in the mother's bloodstream? In L.A., there's enough carbon monoxide just in the air to show up in Miami. Hey, Pete! Just a man I want to see. I'm just a man everybody wants to see. This Miss Louise Walker business is going to be a little more of a problem than we thought. Basically, I need to know every move she's made since she came to L.A., plus the soup to nuts on her life in Indianapolis. Pete, come on. She is barely telling me her name at this point. Dumpster lady's history from Indy to L.A., including a new toxologist report? You got it. I'll get it. Thanks. Nobody said it would be easy, huh? <laughs> Me too. Huh? Never mind. What are you doing here? You're the only stepmother of God. I mean, where else would I go? Your father's? I hate him. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Don't you? Well, well, that's different. He's divorcing me. How is he? Okay, I guess. I never see him anymore. He's so busy with... How is Bridget? What is she, 12 now? 
That's why I don't like spending the weekends with him anymore. She's not you. I guess that's the idea, huh? You can't live with me, you know. Come on, let's go call your mother. I hate her, too. You're 15. You're supposed to hate your parents. Come on. Come on. Can I at least stay for a little while? Look, Kimmer, after all that's happened, it's important that I live alone right now. You know, I mean, I want to read. I want to keep a journal. I want to... Um, I need to think things through. I just need time to be by myself. Your own space. Exactly. Solitude. Okay. Hey. Didn't hear you come in. Hi. Hi. This is Steve. He's my carpenter. Steve makes shelves. Wonderful shelves. Oh, yeah, right. For all of that reading you're going to do in your solitude. This is Kimberly, my stepdaughter. Hi. Hey. Hello? Grace! Yes, she's right here. And I'm going to bring her right home. Yeah, well, all I know is every adult I have ever met, that's you and Dad included, yap, yap, yap about wait till you're older, you're just a kid, blah, blah, blah. You're all full of it. I mean, do you remember that guy from UCLA that nobody would let me date only because he was five years older than me? And now, now you're all going around screwing around with 20-year-olds. Yeah, wait a minute. You know, I don't need this crap from a teenager. And he's 25. Besides, there's a big difference. I didn't leave your father for this man. You know, I've been alone for almost a year. I, I don't mean to set a bad example. I just, oh, I, 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 I want to explore that. You know. Yeah. You're horny. lawyers besides you. You're in and out of here over a hundred times a day. If I take the time to stop and say good morning, good afternoon, good night, hello, goodbye, or have a nice day, every time one of you comes or goes, I'll develop nodes on my vocal cords. Nothing personal. Uh, Pete left this info for you in your Louise Walker meeting. Oh, great, thanks. Forgot something. It's a gift. You keep them. I don't believe in cutting. I was in Indianapolis once. Hot in the summer. Probably swim a lot. Probably work up to 50 meters, you know, say 23 seconds. You're famous at North Central High for your swimming. Not to mention your unique eating habits. Chunky style peanut butter and Oreos. Tell me something. Do you cover the whole cookie? Or do you eat the white stuff first and then refill it with the peanut butter? <laughs> Louise, you've got to talk to me. You've been accused of causing your baby's death. I don't believe it. But I need you to tell me the truth about what really happened. And you're the only one who can do that. Uh, 
So, you were still a minor when you got pregnant? You hid it as long as you could, but you needed your parents' consent for an abortion, but were afraid to ask. True? Hey, you think it's been difficult in here for three weeks? What do you think it's going to be like for 25 years? Now, I'm the only shot you've got, so I'd advise you to take it. Did you put your baby in that dumpster to die? No. Good. And I wasn't afraid to ask. My parents just wouldn't sign. Our minister convinced him it was a God's will. That's when I picked up and came out here. The people at the free clinic said by the time you got here, it was too late for an abortion. But they also told me that you decided to make the best of it. They said you never missed a checkup. You took the vitamins they gave you. That you were going to have your baby. Going to have it? I, I did have it. Well, I didn't know I was going to have it that early. It was premature? Middle of the night. I was sleeping behind the supermarket. Trying to save money? Trying to eat. They throw out lots of good stuff every day. So, tell me what happened. Look, Louise, I know this isn't easy, and I don't like prodding you. This is the only way I can get the information I need to defend you. So come on. Tell me what happened that night. Here. Forget about them, right? You just talk to me. I'm sleeping. And the next thing I know, it feels like my stomach's being ripped out. I thought it was from the crap I'd been eating, you know? Something rotten. But then I look down, and I'm sitting in a bunch of blood. So I had to, uh, I had to, to, you had to what? You know, I had to take off my jeans and all, it was coming out, I couldn't believe it, there it was, my baby. So tiny. So covered in blood. So I wiped it off. It wasn't moving or crying or nothing. It was just so blue. That's, that's when I knew my baby was dead. Then what did you do? Sweater and I buried it. Okay. Oh, it's adorable. Get up, I'm beached. I'll come to you. Hi. Hi. This is for you. Hello, Mother. Hi, darling. What is it? Something terribly extravagant. Mm. Box of money. <laughs> December's Baby, a mature mother's guide to preserving the sanity you thought you just regained. <laughs> it's perfect. Thanks. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, really. Now, there's a 30-pound cake that needs your attention. Please, have some. Helen, it's your favorite. And have some coffee, too. I'd have been here sooner, but I've been stuck in the library since Friday. You've been working all weekend. No choice, Mother. Dory says you're with the public defender's office now. Well, you know, uh, Arthur's uncle is a judge of the Second Circuit, and this gang violence has really gotten to him. 
Have you had to defend any of them? Who? You know, gang members, drug lords. Yes. Well, I admire you. I couldn't do it too depressing. Not for someone who read Kafka in the second grade. Well, seriously. There is no humanity left. The, the violence is indiscriminate. Even children have become victims. That's the worst part. Well, something has to change. Well, if you ask me, I think they should just lock them all up and throw away the key. Susan, even you can't believe that. Yes, I do. Excuse me. It's beautiful. Be right back. I let it touch my teeth, you know. What? The host. I wasn't supposed to touch your teeth, remember? Yeah. How long did you carry that guilt with you? What year is this? <laughs> you okay? No. You want to talk about it? No. You know, what you're doing is really important. What you are doing is really important. Can an accident be important? <laughs> hey, penicillin? <laughs> the discovery of America? Patrick? <laughs> I feel like such a failure, darling. Well, you're not. You're starting a whole new life. Yeah. That's exciting. What you're doing isn't easy. I admire you for it. In a way, uh, I envy you. It's weird. What? I envy you. Lou, the guy's from Nepal, and they read him as Miranda writes in Spanish and Chinese. That's not the point. What I'm trying to say is it's not an admissible confession. Damn straight. I can cite you chapter and verse. <laughs> Name one. <laughs> Name you a hundred. Hey, look, I got... Oh, wait a minute. Just a second. I got it here. Oh, Hank. Just, just a second. You mind? People versus Sambini. People versus Simbini, all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I got, I got work to do. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, thanks. You're welcome. Got the pathologist report on the Walker case from Pete. Oh, great. Bad news? Worse. What happened? There was more carbon monoxide in the baby's lungs than could possibly come through the placenta. So it breathed. Judith, I need to talk to you. Impossible. It's about Louise Walker. I'm in court all afternoon. I'm sorry. Aren't you on the wrong floor? No, I'm not. This is important. Everything's important. Judith! All right, but make it quick. Step into my office. What's up? I need an involuntary manslaughter on Louise Walker. Forget it. Mothers who murder their babies aren't real high on my sympathy list. It wasn't murder. What was it? A bedtime story? Second-degree murder requires intent. Exactly. She tossed her baby into a dumpster. She doesn't even deny it. You ever met anybody who didn't know that if you throw a living, breathing baby into a trash bin, it dies? She thought it was already dead. Oh, did she tell you that? Yes. What the hell did you expect? I don't know. You know, I didn't expect to find out that she'd be prevented from getting a therapeutic abortion, which is still legal in this country. Or that she'd wind up giving birth in a supermarket alley in the middle of the night where she was sleeping because they had edible garbage. I didn't expect to find out a lot of things, Judith, but I did. And they matter. No intent, no murder. The girl's life is already a disaster. What do we gain by making it worse? 
All their lives are disasters. What's that got to do with it? A baby died that night. Louise Walker was responsible. I agree with you. Her response was a far cry from intent, and you know it. Voluntary manslaughter. That's still a possible 11 years. She's young. Take it or leave it. Hey, come on, move your tuchers. We're supposed to be at George's a half an hour ago. All right, all right. You play poker? You asking me? Yeah, we'll liberate the gamblers. You want to come? No, thanks. I got to work. Let's go. Yeah. Rosie, what are you looking for? Needle in a haystack. In legalese. I'm trying to find some way to plead Louise Walker not guilty. I thought you got the DA to agree to manslaughter. I did. But I keep thinking I should go to trial. So what are the odds? Not great. But I'd really like to try. <laughs> yeah, well, the question is, are you prepared to risk her life just because you'd really like to try? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'm just being upfront about You're just being your usual holier-than-thou self without knowing squat about it, Hank. The question is, am I prepared to take Judas' deal and let Louise Walker right off the next 11 years of her life doing hard time? So if there's even a remote chance of saving her ass, I'm going to sit here and find it until I pass out. Well, it's so nice to see you two getting along so well. Well, it ticks me off. Hey, hey, come on, look. You have feelings. That's good. That's fine. It's part of the job. A PD without feelings is a PD who should be retired. Yes? Yes? All right, this is a fraternity. We work, excuse me, it's a sorority. We work together here for the client's sake. Now, Rosie, what makes you think that you could do better than the deal? Gut instinct. Based on what? I think the jury would believe her. She's tough, but she's starting to trust me, and I think I can make her a sympathetic witness. And again, she's my only witness. Would you go to trial on it? If I believed in my client the way she says she believes in hers, I'd be tempted. But if I cared about my client the way she says she cares about hers, I'd be reluctant to take a chance. We need to talk about what's going to happen in court tomorrow. I'm going to say not guilty, and you're going to prove it. Right? Louise, there are no guarantees once we set foot in that court. The jury's a group of people, 12 different people, and you never know what they're going to do. What are you saying? The prosecution has evidence which could be made to sound very incriminating to a jury. The DA has offered to reduce the charge to manslaughter. You could get as little as three years or as much as 11, but if we go to trial, then we lose. You could be sentenced to 25 years. I told you I didn't kill my baby. Louise, that isn't what I I'm... can't believe this. I was going up on murder before I met you, and I'm going up for murder now. Why the hell do they even bother giving you a lawyer? You said you could help me. You said to trust you. You're just like everybody else. You don't care about me. You lied. You said you believed me, and I told you the truth. You told me what you thought was the truth, and I believe you thought it was the truth. So? It wasn't the truth. Says who? You? Are you God? The medical report proves that your baby had a high concentration of carbon monoxide in his bloodstream. You made a mistake, Louise. Mistake? Uh, I don't understand. What are you saying? That it was alive? Louise, I know. No. I don't want to hear this. I'm sorry, Louise. I am truly sorry. My baby was alive. I know you didn't realize it. No! Oh, God, no! No! Oh, God, no!
Hi. I was just, uh, in the neighborhood, you know. Right. What happened? You didn't pay your electric bill? I just felt like sitting in the dark. Do you want to talk about it? I don't think I can. You want me to hit the road? I just... Rosie. Ben, it's okay. Really, it's okay. Do you wish to make a statement before I pass sentence? Yes, Your Honor, I do. We, all of us in this room, in this country, live in what has increasingly become a disposable society. The regard for human life has deteriorated to an alarming degree. The People versus Louise Walker would seem to be a case in point. A baby. The most innocent form of life has been crudely disposed of. We are shocked, as well we should be. But the circumstances are not in any way what they appear to be upon first examination. Louise Walker is a woman legally. But she's a girl, Your Honor. A young girl who, alone in a concrete alley, gave birth to a baby that was not crying, not moving, and was blue in color. She believed it to be stillborn. Louise Walker believed that her baby was dead when she wrapped it in her sweater and buried it. She was by herself, she was petrified. And in that state of shock, she used what she thought was good judgment. She was wrong. But it was only last night that she learned of the tragic mistake that she'd made. And I believe living with that knowledge for the rest of her life is punishment enough. Under the the agreement with the district attorney. It's within your power, Your Honor, to levy the minimum sentence of three years. I ask you to do so. But more importantly, I am asking you, please, to suspend that sentence and return Louise Walker to the custody of her parents with the condition of mandatory psychological counseling. We have a chance here, Your Honor, a chance to soften the blow of that infant's death by rescuing the life of its mother. Thank you. This is the sort of case that makes my job a difficult one, Counselor. You've made some very good points, and they're very well taken. Consequently, I agree that the minimum term of three years is appropriate in this case. However, due to the severity of the crime, I cannot in good conscience suspend sentence. Therefore, I regretfully order Louise Walker to serve said term at the California Institution for Women in Frontera. This court is adjourned. Rosie O'Neill, am I glad I found you? I can't talk to you right now. I was at your office doorstep, break of dawn already. They told me you were over here. I run like a gelding in heat to, to, to see you. I mean, we, we gotta talk. Please, Mr. Gagliardi, I just can't talk to you right now. You gotta. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at a big time situation here. There's, there's about to be a few developments in my case that nobody knows about but me. So you gotta. I'm sorry, I can't. It wasn't my fault, Rosie. 
I swear from the bottom of my heart. Rosie, I'm in trouble. I'm out here all alone. I mean, what, please. What, what, what am I going to do without you? Probably five to ten. Come on. So what's the problem, Mr. Gagliardi? Please, gags. Gags. <laughs> 